We're going to look at two beautiful owls which are usually easy to identify but in some cases can be challenging to separate. Both long-eared and short-eared owls are medium-sized birds, roughly with the same body size as a barn owl, although both have significantly longer wings. First impressions of either species, especially if seen flying in daylight, is of a blunt or rather a sawn-off buzzard. The most obvious feature of short-eared owl, at rest or in flight, are the piercing yellow eyes, and these can be seen from a surprising distance. Despite the bird's name, the ear tufts are virtually never seen. If watched quartering a field at distance, several other key features are obvious. These include a white trailing edge to the upper wings, seen as the bird banks. A distinct contrast between the dark head and pale belly, which is the same colour as the underwings, is also obvious. The wingtips on short-eared owl are black, and they have the same impact as the black C-shaped carpal patch on the underwings as well. Good views, especially when perched, will reveal that those piercing eyes are surrounded by sooty black, perhaps giving the appearance of too much mascara and eyeliner. Short-eared owls are the species most likely to be encountered during the day, and they hunt during the summer over uplands, moors and heaths. Numbers are swelled in the winter, and then birds are more often found in coastal areas and rough grassland. In both seasons, short-eared owls roost and nest on the ground, and so are not tied to habitats with trees. Long-eared owls are beautifully marked, cryptic and well-camouflaged birds. If you are lucky enough to find one at rest during the day, you will be struck by the orange eyes, fine markings and large ear tufts, although be warned these can be flattened. The facial markings of vertical white feathering with vertical black lines through the eyes give a completely different look to the face, often resulting in a somewhat astonished expression. Unlike with short-eared owl, the markings on the chest continue down onto the belly, meaning that in flight, even from a distance, the belly contrasts with the pale underwing. Although a highly nocturnal species, Long-eared owls can occasionally be encountered flying in daylight, perhaps if they've been disturbed from roost, or migrant birds on the east coast in autumn. Then the contrasting belly and a complete lack of a white trailing edge to the upper wing can help clinch the identification. Another clue can be the wingtips, which have fine black barring. At any distance, the C-shaped black carpal patch has much more impact than the wingtips of a long-eared owl. Long-eared owls are usually tied to areas with mature trees, often conifers, especially where these are alongside more open hunting areas. But the birds can be found, especially in winter, in scrub or even hedgerows. Occasionally migrants caught out by daylight can be found roosting in quite unlikely habitats. It's worth noting that if seen flying in very poor light, it can actually be very difficult to separate these two species in flight. Neither of these owls is particularly vocal. Short-eared owls are unlikely to be heard at all during the winter, but when breeding the males display with a song flight, consisting of a rapid series of deep hoots, which, although quiet, can be heard up to a kilometre away. This is often accompanied by wing claps. Birds can also give a little barking chef chef call when alarmed or being mobbed. Long-eared owl males start hooting very early in the year, a deep, clear hoot repeated fairly slowly. Alarm calls sound like someone blowing through a comb wrapped in paper, a strange but distinctive sound. But often the most obvious clue to the presence of long-eared owls in the breeding season is the unique begging call of the young, which sounds just like the hinges of a squeaky gate. <laughs>